Falls. I'm here with uh, Brian from Captain Soup, and we're going to have a really wonderful interview. Now, I have to tell everyone that Brian is an active duty Army officer, a former instructor of leadership at West Point. So all views expressed by Brian are his own and do not represent the views of the United States Army or the United States Military Academy at West Point. He's also a sponsor of the Walls Protocol, uh, and so I very, very much appreciate what he's doing. He has uh, a really wonderful uh, story, uh, and I'm going to let Brian uh, tell you that because I think you'll find it incredibly uh, inspiring. Oh, thanks, Dr. Walls. Again, so great to see you again. Um, and uh, yeah, I I came to um, using food as medicine um, out of just necessity uh, to try and save uh, my career as an Army pilot. Back in 2013, I was serving in the Republic of Korea, um, and I was starting to gain weight. I was getting lethargic. I was having cognitive issues. And then one day in the aircraft, it felt like the world was spinning on me, and I was getting spatially disoriented. Um, so I was grounded from flying. Eight months of going to every specialist, chasing down every symptom, um, and it got to the end of that rabbit hole. They said, you know what, Brian, sometimes stress does weird stuff to the body. You know, you, you might need to go talk to mental health um, about what's going on with you. Um, and so that's when sort of my wife and I, um, as a Hail Mary, had to kind of figure it out on our own. And we discovered that my symptoms um, very closely correlated with autoimmune symptoms. Uh, and so we started treating it with the autoimmune protocol uh, diet and like my life changed. Mm -hmm. And so um, I got my brain back, my body back, my energy back. Uh, I was able to get back up on flight status. Um, and in the Republic of Korea, that in itself is a deployment. So you're not really at risk of going anywhere else overseas. You're just sort of there. And so I had my house and I could make my food. But then at my next assignment, I was in command and we were, um, we go to the desert for a few weeks at a time. We did a deployment over to Europe and I had to figure out how do I keep eating this way? Um, yes, mm -hmm. paleo autoimmune, uh, I was doing keto, uh, low carb, high fat, um, nutrient dense. How do you continue eating this way in an austere environment? And so that's why I started tin canning these soups. Uh, we don't sell them tin can, they come frozen. But uh, I start just for myself. Um, I canned hundreds of pounds of soup with my wife in my garage. And so whenever I went on deployments or training, I just had a jet boil camp stove and soup. And I was good to go. And I can maintain my health um, by doing that. Okay, so let's take let's take a moment. So where were you shipping your soups? Yeah, so I uh, would take them with me um, to uh, the Mojave Desert, where we did uh, mm -hmm. training at the National Training Exercise. Uh, and then we, when uh, Russia annexed Crimea, my unit mm -hmm. was sent over to Germany um, to sort of reassure our NATO allies. Um, and so we were staged um, over there in Europe for a few months. Um, okay, so... I bet your colleagues thought uh, thought this was pretty interesting that you're shipping all of this food and you're not eating with them. You're eating with your 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 own food. So uh, tell us about that and what what are these soups like that that you're uh, put together? Yeah, so they're they're pretty much they have a bone broth base, um, and our bone broth has organ meat in it. So the idea is to just get as much nutrients packed um, into as small a container as possible. Um, so it has bone broth, meat, and vegetables. Um, they're cooked gourmet, so they're super delicious. Uh, I was mm -hmm. eating these uh, for every meal, for every day, for about uh, three months or so. And so mm -hmm. I wanted them to taste really, really good. Um, and so they're 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 made gourmet. Um, but yeah, you can imagine. Um, the the razzing uh from my 
from my uh, military friends. Um, you know, everybody's going through the chow line and I'm over there, you know, with my soup. And to be perfectly honest, it was something I was quite um, sort of shy about. Um, it felt like a weakness. Like I needed mm -hmm. special food for me to be okay. I needed my, and if, if you think about, you know, kind of the military and it's like, ah, you know, we eat gunpowder and, you know, climb in yeah. the dirt, but I need my special organic grass fed, you know, special foods. Um, so yeah, I was, I was a, I was a captain at the time and, um, you, you know, my, my roommates in Germany would walk in like, Oh, what's going on in the soup kitchen tonight? Let me guess. We got some more lamb soup. Um, and that's where that's where the nickname Captain Soup Captain came soup from. Came it from. was more it was more of a razzing than a than a term of endearment, but I, I liked it. But it's it's good to embrace. Yeah. It, it's it's wonderful to embrace. So uh, let's talk about the varieties of soups that that you've made. Um and everyone is listening, I want you to know. I've had these soups. They are delicious. Uh, and so you, what's, what's in the lineup currently? Yeah. So we have, um, we have some lamb soups, uh, some classic and Dijon as, as well as beef. Um, and then we have, uh, one, one vegan soup. Um, we have a, our first full gaps, uh, soup. Um, oh, so hang on. People may not be familiar with GAPS. So can can we bring everyone up to speed with what GAPS is? Yeah, Dr. Natasha McBride's uh, GAPS protocol, um, gut gut and psychology uh, syndrome. And so the, the big key there is it, it's a bit more restrictive um, and it's not it doesn't use a bone broth. It uses a meat broth. Um, which uh, the histamines are lower and then it, it tends to be easier um, on the stomach. And that's mm -hmm. why uh, I, I believe that. Um, uh, that yeah, and for everyone who's, who's listening, I, I believe uh, uh, Dr. Campbell uh, had a, a son with um, a severe autism uh, and developmental uh, delay, uh, which she has managed very well with her uh, GAPS uh, program. Uh, and uh, so there are many, many followers in the uh, autism community that are very familiar with her work. Mm. Indeed. Yeah, it's, pre it's pretty incredible. Um, I know you spoke to a, a colleague of mine, our director of nutrition, Mary, um, a few weeks ago at a um, practitioner. Um, uh, yeah. And um, yeah, Mary found Dr. Natasha and then was on an all soup uh gap soup diet um this chick this chicken soup that we make is the soup that mary ate every day for two years to reverse all her autoimmunity and and get her health back and so um we i use uh mary as sort of she's a you know practitioner and working and coaching people and so i sort of listen to her and like what what would be helpful for people in adhering to various diets and so We've sort of expanded our line in terms of um, low histamine, antihistamine, uh, low lectin uh, soups, um, mm -hmm. and then we we maintain uh, currently all of our uh, all of our soups have ketogenic macros to them. Okay, uh, that is perfect. Now, how how do people get these soups? Yeah, they. They can just go online to captainsoup.com. It's a really simply simple ordering process. There's no subscriptions. Um, and the the shoot the soup shows up frozen um, and it stays in your freezer. You can eat it at your will, grab and go. Uh it stays fresh and delicious for about a year uh, in the freezer. So if I uh I have my captain soups in my freezer, I take them out. Uh, do I just leave, let them sit on the counter to thaw? Do I put them in the refrigerator to thaw? Uh, what What do you advise me to do there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, some people, my wife likes to put it in the refrigerator. That way, it's a little bit more thawed. For she's a, a nurse, um, and she she grabs it in the middle of her shift uh, and uh, throws it in the microwave, which I ask her not to do, but she does it anyway. Um, so we, we, we recommend, um, cooking on the stovetop and just 
throwing it in frozen and it's gonna it's gonna taste like uh fresh made soup mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a comment we always get is people are like i can't believe this is frozen and that really has to do with where we're at in the willamette valley we're so close to our suppliers that um like our meat our lamb and our beef are actually butchered to our order um mm -hmm. and then so they're processed we pick up the next day we make our soup we freeze it um so everything is just uh is very is very fresh and and very delicious and nutritious. Yeah, and so when I'm uh, buying this, am I getting just a pint of soup? Do I get a quarter soup? Do I get a gallon of soup? Do I have yes. all of those options? Uh, we we have we currently have one option, and the idea is that they're sort of uh, grab and go meals, and so yeah. they're all uh, about sixteen uh, ounces. Um, and so if you think about like a pint, you know, a pint of ice cream, it it looks about. But, th but this like is really that. good for you folks. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this is really, really good for you. Yeah, this is not ice cream. Okay, um, so they arrive frozen. I can uh, put them in on my stovetop. You put them uh, in the microwave begin, or in the microwave. Yeah. Warm them up uh, and have them. Do you, I'm, I'm curious. Do you have any soups that are intended to be consumed cold? Uh, we we don't. Um, that's it. That's interesting. I've eaten them cold. It's. Uh... Well, I have too, but you know, it's interesting. It's a challenge I'll put out for you, Brian. That it might be interesting for you to explore. Um, you know, most of my cold soups are more vegetable based. They, they aren't mm. uh, meat based, and they're not going to be uh, ketogenic. So uh, I might have to th think through if that really is realistic. But I, I do. I do sometimes have your soup cold because I was too lazy. I didn't want to heat it up. So. And it was still delicious. So yeah, that's good. That's good. I I per, I prefer it uh, a little on the warm side. But yeah. yeah, we might have a the Dr. Walls cold soup coming out next year. We'll see. Well, that, that would be sort of fun, you know. Except I I know uh, during the summer in particular that it mm. can be really very nice and refreshing to have uh, cold soups. Yeah, I and, like it. We have to talk more about this. And. I will confess, you know, during the summer, we, I do this just a couple weeks during the summer when my tomatoes are all coming in. We have lots of uh, uh, fresh tomatoes, fresh peppers, and I'll make uh, cold gazpacho mm. with lot, lots and lots of olive oil. And it's, uh, but with the tomatoes, it, it is probably taking me out of ketosis. But um, I, I will do that uh, for a couple of weeks uh, 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 during the summer. So uh, let's talk about organ meats. Mm. Um, I, I think everyone knows that I'm a huge fan of organ meat. It has so many uh, great uh, nutrition. Uh, really, um, it, it is a powerhouse uh, for minerals, uh, coins MQ, uh, the B vitamins. Uh, can you tell us about your uh, liver pate? Yeah. Um, well, it, as I mentioned before, too, the... Um, you know, organ meat is a big part of our bone broth base that finds its way into most of our soups as sort of a backdoor um, to get that organ meat into our soups. And then we also, um, for our customers who are looking for a little bit uh, uh, more, uh, we make a, mm -hmm. a delicious beef uh, liver pate. Um, it's tenderized, it's creamy. Um, people, people really like it. that. You do eat, eat cold. That's best. That we do eat cold. Okay. Uh, and so that comes frozen. It does. Yep. And is that, uh, tell us, is that a, a, in the pipe containers as well, or is that in a smaller container? Because it's, it's in a pate? slightly smaller container. It's like two uh, four ounce scoops of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so there's split. You can kind of pull one out and, and, and thaw one out at a time. Um, and then it, it's good in the fridge for about five days after that. This is super, super uh, nutrition. Do you have any tips on how people should try your liver pate? Um, I like it with just by itself. Um, lots of folks um, prefer with, you know, crackers or um, using it as sort of a, um, a dip accessory. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but I, I can personally eat about uh, one, uh, four ounce, four ounce scoop. In, yep. in a sitting. Me too. Yeah. So it, here's a tip that that how we love our pate. 
Uh, I'll get a cabbage leaf or a kale leaf, a uh, collard leaf, uh, mm -hmm. put a smear of pate on it, uh, put a smear of guacamole on it, and then uh, we'll put hot sauce on it and mm -hmm. roll it up uh, and eat that. My kids would love uh, feeding that to their friends. They wouldn't tell their friends that they were just eating liver pate because they knew if their friends knew that they had just eaten liver pate, they wouldn't be exclaiming like, oh my gosh, that is really delicious. So, <laughs> so you know, again, if you add uh, some guacamole and then if you like hot mm. sauce, you can put a little hot sauce on it. If you are avoiding uh, nightshades, you could put a little ginger sauce on it and that works out really well. No. Um, okay, so are there any plastics in this process? No, no, no plastics. Um, you know, we try to um, make decisions that are, are best for optimal human health. Um, and so we, um, we have a, a rule of no, nothing hot uh, is allowed to touch plastic. We do have some plastic bins in our refrigerators, set, but everything else is stainless steel or wood um, just to um, protect the health and endocrine system uh, of our customers. That is so marvelous. So things are coming in glass. They're coming in cardboard. How, how, how are they coming? Yeah, they're coming they're in, a cardboard, in a cardboard cup. Um, yeah. For our, we, we're out of Eugene, Oregon. For our local customers, we do a pickup with a glass, reusable glass jar. Um, but for, for most of our customers are, who are around the country, uh, we ship in, in, in paper cups, much like you would see like an ice cream pint. Okay. So again, this is perfect. Uh, and, um, I, we, we can easily store that, uh, in our deep freezer. Uh, and you know, when I travel, it, it can be very anxiety producing to mm. eat food that someone else has produced. Because, you know, I have had gone to conferences where people have assured me that the food was going to be good and, and you know, that my dietary needs would be taken care of. Uh, and, uh, and, and for me, the problem is what, if I'm exposed to gluten, dairy, or eggs, my face pain will trigger, so trigeminal neuralgia. Um, and that, that is uh, just really uh, awful. So, uh, Brian, can can we uh, have these kinds of soups shipped to the hotels that we're going to, uh, to stay at a conference? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so so the thing I would do then would be to call the hotel, say we're going to be getting an order of captain's soups, soups delivery. Yeah. So, so we have, of... have a little coordination to do there. Yeah. Uh, what, what I like to do is um, I actually just bring it in my check lag, uh, my my check baggage, um, because if it if it's frozen all the way and it stays, it, I mean, it's just a solid block. Um, so you you can take it through frozen. Sometimes I'll have if I'm have the benefit of being at an airport lounge or the USO, I'll ask them to heat it up um, and then. Oh, my gosh, yeah. this this would be way easier. For the plane flight, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I probably can't take it in my uh, carry-on. Not your carry-on. Well, well, but I... Yeah, maybe. It well, stays pretty cold down there, I think. Okay. Well, um, this is uh, just such a phenomenal uh, product. Uh, and nice. again, our nutrition is so important. Having... Uh, food that is safe, nutrient dense. Uh, and uh, I, th I think uh, uh, Captain Brian will tell us again and again that we can do this in as a ketogenic uh, eater, that we can do this um, uh, if we have a low histamine diet. Uh, we can do this if we're doing the AIP diet or the WALS diet or the GAPS diet. Um, you could if you're doing the Mediterranean diet, you could probably still uh, consume these diets uh, because it's filled with vegetables and uh, um, uh, lamb is certainly part of the uh, Mediterranean diet. So, you, you know, you Brian, have a new Tom Ka soup that we, we oh. release seasonally with Pacific cod as well. Um, 
So oh, it's that, a little, that is little fish and coconut milk. And it's quite delightful. Okay. Now, um, I, I think you also have some interesting aspects to your health journey with mold and heavy metals, which mm. I know is a problem for uh, many in the autoimmune world. I wonder, I think we have a few minutes. Could you tell us a bit about that, Brian? Sure. <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, <sighs> drug reversing the autoimmune symptoms with food and lifestyle was sort of the first step. And so, um, so I was struggling with Hashimoto's, um, you know, so you kind of marked out by TPO and antibodies. I got to a point where I'm still at now, um, where I don't have any TPO antibodies. So it, it appears as though the, the autoimmunity is reversed, but, um, I got sick again uh, two years ago while I was uh, teaching at West Point and my entire nervous system started to fail me and it was worse than the first time. And so we look back at the autoimmune condition. It's still not there. Looked at my thyroid. Thyroid's fine. Um, and so it was it was very confusing. Um, I was very fortunate to uh, be involved with a functional medicine working group across the DOD. And one of those individuals had a nonprofit and created a pipeline. Um, it's his name, Jeff Dardia. It's um, his nonprofit's called Task Force Dagger. It's amazing. Um, but he's been finding a way to get functional medicine solutions to war fighters for the last decade. And so what he did is with his um, with his charity is sent me to the Cleveland Clinic Center for Organization because what the army said was, oh, your nervous system's failing. You're a combat soldier. You have PTSD. And because mm -hmm. it looks a lot like the yeah. symptoms manifest a lot like that. Um, so the limbic system is just freaking out. I'm sensitive. I became sensitive to everything, noise, light, sound, um, EMF, which is, uh, which is kind of wild. And, um, but I went to the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, they knew exactly what was going on. Uh, they did a clinical diagnosis for mold and heavy metal. They tested for it and confirmed that. And so now I'm currently doing a mold detox being run by the Cleveland Clinic and the army doctors are, are um, letting them take lead uh, at a soldier recovery unit in, uh, in Fort Lewis. And so now my job is to heal. Um, it was a little bit, it felt like a setback because it was like, Hey, I'm Captain Soup. I have this hero arc journey. How is it that I'm sick again? Yeah. Um, but you know, it's it's much like onions, you know, layers of the onion. We're sort of getting to the root cause of what caused the immunity uh to begin with. And so I'm going through that detox process. It's a little rough. I'm using soup to support my immune system and a lot of uh, stress reduction and lifestyle modification. A lot more time in nature, gardening, working with animals, um, being outside, and um, it's a pretty good life. Uh, so everyone who's listening, uh, we have our uh, healing journeys. Things can get bumpy. Mm. Go back to your medical team, go back to your primary care team, go back to your functional medicine team, because we may have to investigate again and find what the new issues are so we can address them. Well, Brian, this has been uh, really marvelous. I want to thank you so much for being a Walls Protocol sponsor. I want to thank you for all of your uh, wonderful work. And again, for anyone who has been watching this interview, please uh, tell us uh, what were the key things that you learned, what action you're going to take uh, to support your healing journey. Uh, and Brian, one more time, your website? Uh, CaptainSoup.com. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.